Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All West Virginia Students, sponsored by the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers in StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot hear or see you. This is just one of the many different happenings, sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at wvacrao.com. This, presented, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, wvacrao.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Hello, thank you for joining. Um, so I am Amanda Harris and I am an admissions counselor here at West Virginia Wesleyan College. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about what we offer in terms of academics, location, class sizes, residence halls, and of course ways to get involved on campus. And then I will turn the presentation over to my coworker, Scott Stopel, who will be going into a little more detail and telling you a little bit more about everything. Um, just so you know, if you have a question during this presentation, just feel free to hit that Q&A at the bottom and just type in your question. Um, we will be sure to save some time at the end to address those questions for you. And then, of course, if by some chance we miss your question, uh, we will message you afterwards. But without further ado, let's jump into this thing and tell you a little bit about West Virginia Wesleyan. So um, here at Wesleyan, we believe that life isn't about doing just one thing. We know that not all students are the same, and we don't want you to feel like you're kind of stuck in a one-size-fits-all education. In fact, we want you to explore all of your interests and pursue the activities that appeal to you um, and whatever that means for you. So, I mean, if that's exploring several different majors or several different minors or different organizations. I mean, you're bound to find something you're interested in here at Westland. But before we get into all of that, let's talk about location. So for those of you who may not know, um, West Virginia Westland is located in Buchanan, West Virginia. And if you're familiar with West Virginia, that is Upshur County. So Upshur County has a population of about 5,600. It's very quaint and residential. Um, it's very small town, so a lot of like mom and pop style restaurants, a lot of like small shopping places. Then of course we do have some chain restaurants and uh, what town doesn't have Walmart. So we do have different places like that for you. Um, in fact, Buchanan has actually been rated one of America's coolest small towns. Um, it actually made the top 15 as well as the top 50 at best small downtown. So it's actually a pretty cool town. So if you get an opportunity to visit, it's definitely something worth checking out and exploring. As far as safety goes, as you know, West Virginia itself is among one of the safest states in America. Um, Upshur County is actually among one of the safest counties in West Virginia. So it's a very safe county. It's not just a safe campus, but it's a safe area in general. So definitely something to keep in mind with that too. Also something worth noting, so whenever you picture where Buchanan is or where Wesleyan is located, I always kind of like describe us as we're kind of kind of centrally located. We're kind of close to everything really. So we're about 90 minutes north of Charleston, West Virginia, about two hours south of Pittsburgh, PA, and about four hours west of Washington, DC and Baltimore, Maryland. So we're actually pretty close to most cities. We're not too far out of the way from a lot of different places um, that you may want to visit or that you may be from or have family from. We're pretty close, so definitely something to keep in mind with that too. All right, so let's talk about what success means to you. Well, success means something different to everybody. It means something different to me and I'm sure it means something different to you as well. But here at West Virginia Wesleyan, 
Um, we do have a 91% rating of our students who have reported back that they have been employed within a year of graduation or they have went on to grad school. So that number stays pretty high for us. Um, and this is actually based on an average over the last three years, but prior to that, that number was still relatively high. So that's definitely something that we pride ourselves on. We don't want you to just come to school and get an education and then just go on your way. We actually want you to be successful outside of Westland. And we definitely set you up for that possibility. So something to kind of keep in mind is that Westland's had a lot of different recognition. So we do have um, we have been voted best value for Southern Regional Universities. Um, we have been voted first tier regional university in the South, as well as best school in the Southeast, um, based on the Princeton Review, and hidden gems in the Northeast. And as you can see off to the side here, this lists some of the places that our graduates have went on to work. So we have students who went on to work at Walt Disney. Um, the FBI. We've had students who went on to work at various hospitals and different health systems throughout the state of West Virginia, as well as engineering companies, environmental companies, um, and different schools. So honestly, the sky's the limit with it. All right, now for the campus itself. <clears throat> now we are one of the few flat campuses in West Virginia. The campus is completely flat. It's on 90 acres, Georgian red brick campus, which means in that picture, that red brick you see, that's the majority of the buildings on campus. So it's actually, um, it's actually a really pretty campus, but it's especially really pretty now in the fall uh, with the leaves. But the way I describe Wesleyan is just think of a large square. So here's this large square, you've got your dorms on one side, you've got your classrooms on the other side, you've got this large chapel in the middle, which is kind of like our focal point of everything. And then you've got your football field as well as your other athletic fields off to the side. And then around the parameters, you have parking. So I always just kind of describe it as like a large square. Everything is kind of, it's just conveniently located inside that large square, I guess is a good way to say it. So, it makes your life easier in the wintertime because as you know, of course it snows in West Virginia, it gets cold and it's hard to like truck through snow in the wintertime. So having a nice flat campus where everything is just close and conveniently located just definitely makes your life a lot easier. And then something else I want to talk about is campus renovations. So if you look up West Virginia Westland, you'll probably see that we've received several grants. We've received a lot of money, especially over the past few years. Like I think um, as of last year, we got a $10 million grant and that went to campus renovations as well as our new student success center, which I'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, but since 2009, we've basically been doing a renovation a year. Um, so there's always something on campus that's being renovated. So every time we get money, you're seeing that going back into the school. So that's either going into renovating classrooms, renovating dorms, renovating our library, performing arts center. Honestly, you name it, it's probably been renovated or it will be renovated. So as of, <clears throat> Recently, our library was the most recent renovation, which I'll talk about here in just a second. But as you can see, we've had our Performing Arts Center renovated as well as our dorms. I believe Fleming Hall was, it was either Fleming Hall or Dooney that was our most recent renovation. Um, Dunn Hall was also recently renovated. That is one of our newer premium dorms, which I'll also talk to you about. But as you can see, there's always something going on. <laughs> there's always a new renovation. And like I said, whether that's a classroom, a dorm, or, you know, some building on campus, you're always going to see something being updated. All right, now to talk about that library. Honestly, you should just visit campus just to see the library. I'm kidding. But seriously, it's very nice. Um, it was designed for student success. So it does have 24-7 access, which means um, you can access it 24-7. Let's say that you are going to school and you're also working and you need time to study, but it's getting late and you're like, I can't study in my dorm, my roommate's noisy. You can go to the library. 
You've got 24 seven access with your student ID card. You can just swipe that card and that library is yours whenever you need it. Um, they did do consolidation of several academic services. So you can find several academic services in there. Like I believe our writing center is located in the library. Um, I think you can find some tutoring in there as well. There's just various different things. There's also an increased number of small study group spaces. So we do have areas in our library that we call like pods. And they're just like little rooms that you can go in and you can shut the door and you can um, just have like a group study and they have TV screens in there. So um, there's definitely different ways that you can utilize your study space. We also have a new ADA compliant rear entrance, which means um, it's locked. Like the library is locked. You gotta have that swipe card to get in there. So it's very safe. It's not open to just anybody. It is for our students. Um, and then we do have a self-serve micro market with a cafe style seating. So if you needed to grab a snack while you're studying, that's available to you. And they got lots of goodies in there. Like I said, definitely worth checking out. All right. So the classroom is just the beginning at Wesleyan. So inside the classroom, and I know, I know at this point, if you've attended many of these sessions, you have probably heard several times that you've got small class sizes, lots of one-on-one -on -one attention, but it's true. You do get that with a lot of schools, but especially at West Virginia Wesleyan. Average class size for us is 19. Student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. And all of our classes are taught by professors. There's no grad students, there's no teaching students, there, it's all professors. So we do have students that come from 35 different states, 21 different countries. We are 24% diverse, which means we have about 6% international students. Um, we do have 1,050 enrolled right now. And as you can see, based on our demographics, we do have more females than males but honestly, you can't tell on campus, I promise it's very diverse, but you do, you do get that one-on-one -on -one attention, especially like when you're starting out in your major. So in your gen ed classes, you're probably going to see more students, but whenever you get into your gen ed, once you're outside of your gen ed classes and you're in your major classes, you're going to start seeing much smaller class sizes. You're going to get to know your peers. You're going to get to know your professors. And honestly, that's kind of something you want because at the end of the day, your end goal is the same. You're just trying to get through college and go out and get that dream job. And it's nice having people that you can do that process with. So the advantage of having that smaller class size is getting to know your peers better and it is getting to know your professor better. So that way you feel comfortable reaching out if you have a question or if something happens, you know, you're comfortable talking to your professor about it. So you do get a lot of that personal attention, which definitely, I mean, I think it can definitely make you successful, so. Sorry, I think our slide is froze up here. All right, we will just go ahead and carry on. I'll just do a little, little improv here for you all. Um, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is how Wesleyan can prepare you for almost any career. So even if you're not sure, there we go. <laughs> we got it working again. Um, so, Basically, West Virginia Wesleyan is a private liberal arts school, which means we are rich in liberal arts. So you would need 120 credits to graduate. It's not required um, for you to declare a major right away. So no added pressure. So let's say you're a junior or a senior right now and you're like, I have no idea what I want to do for the rest of my life. Don't worry about it. You're amongst good company and I promise you will figure it out by the time you get to your sophomore year. I think usually the majority of our students, they kind of come into their freshman year and within probably that first semester, they're like, you know what, I think I know what I want to major in. And even if you were to start out and you were one of the ones that know what you want to major in and you're like, I want to do sports business. And then you 
it's time for you to start classes and you're like, no, I'd rather do exercise science. It's no big deal. We have students who do change their mind and that's common. So again, just important to remember if you don't know what you wanna major in right away, you're amongst good company. I promise you will figure it out and you don't have to declare that until your sophomore year. You will see though that our classes are divided up by one third general studies, one third dedicated towards your major and then one third dedicated towards electives. So even if you started out that freshman year without a major, you're still gonna start taking your gen ed classes and your elective classes. That first year would not be a waste for you. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And then also something I wanted to mention is that if you wanted to double major, you could. If you wanted to double minor, you could. If you wanted to just focus on just having a major and a minor, you absolutely could. Or if you just wanted to have a major, that's perfectly fine. Honestly, the sky is the limit with that. It's up to you and your learning style and what you're comfortable with. Also comes down to what your end goal is too. But we do have students who do both. We do have students who double major, double minor, or they just simply focus on their major. So again, no pressure with that. We do offer more than 40 different majors and minors. So you will definitely find something that piques your interest. Um, we do offer, of course, liberal arts studies. We offer pre-professional opportunities as well as professional programs. We do offer, offer. I'm sorry, guys, I can't talk tonight. Um, we do offer Masters of Business Administration, Master of Fine Arts and Creative Writing, Master of Science in Athletic Training, and a Master of Science in Nursing. So if you wanted to do like a five-year MBA, if you wanted to do like five years while you're trying to work on your business degree, so you could do your four-year undergrad, combine that with your master's so it would just be incorporated into your senior year and then an additional year after that that's something you could 100 percent do our nursing program is kind of a it's kind of a beast in itself is a good way to describe it so you can take your nursing degree as far as you would like if you would like to pursue a doctorate of nursing practice you could so if you no matter what you're wanting to pursue with your nursing degree honestly you can take it as far as you would like Something else to mention, and this is something that just happened within the past few weeks, is that Wesleyan did partner with the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine to now offer direct admission to the medical program for our qualified students. So if you're interested in maybe a medical career path, that could be something for you as well. So something to think about there. All right. So we do offer study abroad opportunities and we have had students who've done study abroad. So let's think year without COVID and everybody's allowed to study internationally again. And I'm confident that will happen. Um, we've had students who've done summer abroad, semester abroad, alternative spring break, as well as a May term. Um, we've had students that have traveled to Austria, the Bahamas, Brazil, Costa Rica, Croatia, England, France, Germany, a little bit of everywhere. So if that's something that piques your interest, that could be something worth exploring if you were to come to Wesleyan. So definitely something to keep in mind with that. And um, again, that's not something you have to do, but it is something that is there if you would like to. So it's always worth mentioning. All right, so we do have a nationally ranked learning center on campus, which offers a wide array of support services for any of our students with learning disabilities. We do have a foundational program as well as a mentor advantage program and what is called a Linda Move Bell program. Um, we do offer comprehensive walk-in tutoring, study and testing lab, and many of the foremost facilities in the nation for learning support. So we are able to accommodate a variety of students with learning disabilities. Um, most of our programs are free. We do have some that do come with a fee. So those are probably gonna be like the foundational program, those three that's listed there on the screen. But the majority of those programs are free and available to our students who do need them. All right, and if you were to come to West Virginia Wesleyan, we do have a partnership with Dell. So let's say you're in need of a new computer. 
um, you can get a Dell at a discounted price. And we do offer Microsoft Office 365, so we are able to accommodate our students with that as well. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. Um, residence halls, living on campus. So we do offer standard and premium housing. So standard housing is that classic dorm. So think of probably the dorm that you've seen in a movie. So you have like one bed here, another bed here, and that's your bed, and then you have your roommate. And then you share a restroom and showers with an entire floor. Um, that is a standard dorm. So it's that very classic dorm. Um, we do offer both co-ed, all male and all female with her standard dorms. But let's say you were to get into a co-ed dorm, you don't have to worry about sharing a restroom with the opposite sex. You would actually be, um, they would divide that up by floor. So one floor would be all female, the next floor up would be all male. And we just kind of accommodate all of our students from all different backgrounds. So we're able to make everybody comfortable with that. Now, premium housing, on the other hand, is set up like a suite style. So you would have a suite mate, and instead of sharing like a restroom with an entire floor, you're gonna be sharing a restroom slash shower with your suite mate. So it would be you and your suite mate on this side, restroom connecting, and then there'd be like another little set of suite mates on the other side, I guess is how you would describe it. So it's a much, it's like a much more compact situation, I guess you could describe. Um, I will say standard is our more popular option. However, we do have students that of course do prefer premium housing. Premium is more expensive. Standard is our more affordable popular option, but again, that's up to you in a matter of preference. And then of course, if you were to visit campus, we would be able to give you a tour of that and let you see what both of those look like. Um, we do offer double rooms, single rooms um, on campus, as well as apartments and suites. So again, suites goes right back into that premium housing. As far as your first year, freshmen are required to live on campus their first year. Um, after your first year, if you want to get an apartment, you absolutely can. However, I will say that the majority of our student body does live on campus all four years. We do allow our students to have a car their first year on campus. So you're, you're not stuck by any means. If you drive and you bring your car to campus and you want to go home for the weekend or after class, you want to go, I don't know, if you want to go explore Buchanan or whatever, um, you're not stuck on campus. So that is a nice thing that we do is a way that we kind of offset the fact that you have to live on campus your first year. But again, just important to remember that um, premium housing is all co-ed and it would just be divided by suite mates. So let's say in your suite, it's it's all female, the next suite over could be all male. But again, um, safety and security is a top priority for us. So our dorms are heavily monitored by our security, um, just for your safety. They're not hovering over you, watching your every move. It's just, you know, making sure that everybody's safe and good, but definitely some different options there for you to explore if you get to come visit. All right, and finally, before I turn this over to Scott, um, we do have different ways for you to get involved on campus. So if you wanted to do community service, we do have that available to you. Um, that can be on campus, outside of campus. There's definitely different opportunities for that. We are a D2 school, so we do have D2 athletics. Um, and we do have more than 70 different student organizations on campus. So there's definitely different ways for you to get involved and find an interest for you. Um, and then let's say if you're interested in singing, design, reading, writing, um, acts, plays, you know, creative arts might be something worth exploring for you. But we do offer that. And then of course we do offer Greek life. So we do have several different fraternities and sororities if that's something you're interested in. And then we do offer um, religious life opportunities. So definitely different ways for you to get involved on campus. And I now will turn that over to my coworker, Scott, and he can get into a little bit more detail about that. Hey guys, my name is Scott Stokel. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Westland. I'm excited to have a chance to talk with you guys tonight. Um, as Amanda said, over the next several slides, I'll talk to you about um, several of the different uh, co-curricular activities that we offer at Westland. I'll talk you through kind of the application process, uh, some important dates to keep in mind, 
how you can go about visiting campus, and ultimately how you can contact admissions if you happen to have any questions. So Westland is definitely known uh, for service for sure. Uh, several of our students uh, get involved in community service each year. We've completed uh, thousands of hours of service over the past few years at Westland. Um, that service is completed through our CCE, which is our Center for Community Engagement. That's headed by Jessica Vincent. Uh, Jessica and her staff do a great job of reaching out to students. Uh, we do offer scholarships to students who are service scholars, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, just because you're not a service scholar doesn't mean you can't get involved um, in community engagement. Jessica always does a great job emailing students and posting information on various uh, bulletin boards around campus, uh, just informing students of upcoming community engagement opportunities if students are looking to get engaged in uh, the community or on campus. If you're a student athlete, Westland uh, offers Division II athletics. We are able to offer athletic scholarships at the discretion of our coaches. You can see a list here of uh, all the different programs that we offer for our men's and women's athletes at Westland. Our student athletes have always been very successful, both in the classroom as well as on their playing field. The average GPA of our student athletes is actually a 3.28. That starts with our coaches understanding that your education comes first. Uh, they understand that their athletes have to be going to class. They have to be getting their work turned in on time. Our coaches always do a good job checking progress reports, checking absence lists, uh, just making sure uh, that their student athletes are doing what they're supposed to do on the academic side of things to be successful. Our professors are also really good at working with student athletes. They understand from time to time you might have to be away. Our registrar's office always does a good job sending out email notifications to professors, letting them know whenever an athletic team is going to be away from campus. It's of course always a good idea just to give your professor a heads up uh, to remind them whenever you are gonna be away. Really, as long as you're working with your professor, they're gonna work with you. There's always something fun happening on campus. Bobcat Entertainment does a great job providing uh, several different activities for our students. Uh, we host several planned uh, both weekend and evening activities. Uh, we've hosted uh, various musicians for concerts, uh, comedians. We host several movie nights on the quad, especially uh, whenever it's uh, obviously weather permitting. We've had different cultural events. We offer um, Westland Idol and Westland's Got Talent, very similar to American Idol and America's Got Talent, just with a Westland spin. Uh, we play The Price is Right, and Big Bingo is one of our uh, most popular um, events that we host on campus, just a bingo game, but a lot of the campus community comes together, they fill up the whole cafeteria, they play bingo, and they're able to give away a lot of neat prizes. West Virginia is definitely kind of known for outdoor recreational activities as a whole, uh, so there's all sorts of activities to get involved in within about an hour or so of campus, and Westland likes to make sure our students have an opportunity to get involved in these activities. Uh, they're able to host um, several different uh, trips each year at reduced cost for our students. We've taken students on whitewater rafting trips. Uh, we've done different ski trips in the winter, uh, different camping and caving trips. Uh, we've offered zip lining. One of the more recent activities that we offer to our students uh, was actually a skydiving trip um, in Pennsylvania. If you're a student who's interested in the creative and performing arts, Westland's definitely a great fit for you. About a quarter of our students are involved in the arts in one form or another. You can see a list here of all the different programs that we offer. Uh, so we definitely try to provide a wide a variety of programs for our students um, to get involved in when it comes to the creative and performing arts. We offer auditions for these programs as well. Uh, we are able to offer scholarships. Uh, so if you know that you're interested in continuing in the creative and performing arts at Westland, you can actually check with me. I actually coordinate our auditions for uh, the creative and performing arts. So if you're interested in auditioning for a scholarship, you can let me know. I'll be happy to get you signed up for an audition and we'll be able to have you evaluated by our creative and performing arts faculty. We're currently welcoming both um, virtual or video auditions as well as on-campus auditions if you happen to have um, a campus visit uh, scheduled we're able to host auditions for you during your visit if you would like, if you prefer to audition in person. But if you guys have any questions when it comes to creating performing arts, definitely feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have and get you in touch with our creating performing arts faculty. Westland also offers Greek life. We offer five nationally recognized fraternities and four nationally recognized sororities. Each of our Greek life organizations at Westland works with a different philanthropy. So they work to raise money and raise awareness for this philanthropy. Um, our Greek members are always very active, uh, both on campus as well as throughout the Buckhannon community. Uh, they always do a good job getting involved for sure. All of our Greek life programs compete against one another in various athletic events throughout the year. And uh, one of my favorite uh, activities that our Greek life um, organizations take part in is called Spring Sing. Uh, they host that in the chapel in the spring. All the different uh, sororities and fraternities come together. They generally have a theme each year. They sing 
a handful of different songs, but it's something that the whole campus community can take part in. It's definitely fun to watch um, all of our Greek like Greek life organizations compete uh, during spring sing. Westland is affiliated with the United Methodist Church. Uh, definitely doesn't matter at all what a student's religious denomination is, but we definitely do offer um, the opportunity for students to uh, further their religious and spiritual life if, if they choose to. You can see a list here of some of the different organizations that we offer. Uh, we offer different chapel services throughout the week. We generally have a worship um, service each Tuesday. Um, Caitlin Ware is our uh, spiritual life coordinator. She does a great job always emailing students of upcoming uh, spiritual and religious life opportunities. Uh, we don't actually host um, any kind of a service on Sunday because on Sunday we want our students to have a chance to get involved in a church in the community if they choose to. Again, doesn't matter all what a student's religious denomination is, doesn't matter if they're necessarily involved um, in religion, spiritual life or not, but we're definitely going to provide, again, the opportunity for students to get involved in spiritual and religious life if they choose to. Next thing I'm going to talk to you is the application process. This is definitely important for our seniors if you have not applied yet. If you have not applied, I definitely uh, would encourage you to do so uh, whenever you have a chance. We've already uh, had several applications for this year. We've already started reviewing and accepting students to Westland as well. If you're looking to apply, you can do so for free on our college website. There's never any kind of an application fee at Westland. Uh, you can go on our college website there, that wvwc.edu. You have the option to apply on each page. You can choose to submit either our personal application or we also accept the common application. Doesn't matter at all to us which application you choose to submit. Just the important thing is that you do submit that application to us. Westland's always been more concerned with GPA. We definitely feel that's a better indicator of how successful a student's gonna be at Westland. Going back to last year, um, all of our academic scholarships were solely based on GPA. And we took that a step further this year by adopting a test optional format. Um, we plan to operate that way moving forward as well. Uh, so essentially now to complete your application, the only thing we're going to need are your high school transcripts. Unofficial transcripts are fine through your junior year. You can send those to us yourself or you can work with your high school counselor to send us those transcripts. Uh, but as soon as we have the application, again, the only thing we're going to need to complete that application are your high school transcripts. If you've taken the ACT or SAT, uh, definitely feel free to pass that on to us. Um, same thing with um, essays, personal statements, letters of recommendation, feel free uh, to pass all that uh, information on to us. We'll definitely add it to your file. We'll definitely take a look at it. Big thing is make sure that's not something that holds you up from applying. We definitely want to make sure we get your application, your transcript, so we can start the whole acceptance process. And if you guys ever have any questions at all throughout your application process, definitely feel free to reach out to us, and we'll be happy to help you out in any way that we can. This slide here just kind of shows uh, what our application review process looks like. Um, so again, one of the main uh, things we're going to look at, obviously, once we have your application are your transcripts. That's going to be what your academic scholarships are based on. But we're still going to take a look at your test scores, the different extracurricular activities that you're involved in. And we're also going to uh, read through your essays and your letters of recommendation if you happen to send those to us as well. Every application is going to be reviewed with a personal touch. It'll be reviewed by your personal admissions counselor and you'll receive some feedback from us um, once your application has been reviewed. We do operate on a uh, rolling admissions basis. Uh, we're able to make decisions each week. Generally, as long as we have your application, your transcripts to where it's ready and we can get you accepted um, by noon on Wednesday, that gives us time to process your um, acceptance letter to get out on that Friday. If you happen to get accepted later in the week, your acceptance letter might not, uh, not, might not go out until the following Friday. Um, but again, generally, once we have your application transcripts, you're going to hear from us uh, within about one to two weeks um, on your admissions decision. We do uh, recommend that students apply by January 1st. Obviously, we're going to have some students apply after that deadline. We've obviously had several students who have already applied to Westland. Uh, but generally, January 1st is kind of that uh, deadline that we do recommend you apply uh, by. And then May 1st has become kind of a national college decision day. Uh, so we kind of do recommend that students um, deposit by May 1st. Again, we obviously have students deposit and decided to attend Westland after that deadline. Uh, but again, May 1st has become kind of a national college, rec um, national college decision day when we do recommend students make a decision. You can see here a list of all of our uh, total direct costs for the current school year. Uh, we'll look to be fairly similar for next year. Um, we're definitely very competitive when it comes to offering scholarships and financial aid. We're going to do everything we can to make sure Westline is as affordable as possible for you. Uh, Westline is actually 15% below the average for a, a four-year private college. 
You can see here a list of the academic scholarships that we offer. Again, academic scholarships are solely based on GPA, starting with a cumulative 2.75 GPA, we're able to award our $13,000 merit scholarship. With a 3.3 GPA, students are qualified for our $15,000 Dean Scholarship. And with a 3.75 cumulative GPA, students are qualified for our top academic scholarship, the Presidential Scholarship, which is valued $17,000 per year. In addition to academic scholarships, we do offer several other scholarships. The first thing for you uh, West Virginia residents uh, that you can qualify for is the Promise Scholarship. That's an additional $4,750 that stacks right on top of your academic scholarship. You can see the requirements laid out by the state for that Promise Scholarship. The state requires a 3.0 GPA, and they require a 22 composite score on the ACT with a 20 in each of the subcategories, or an 1100 on the SAT with a 5. 30 in reading and a 520 in math. In addition to uh, the Promise Scholarship, we do offer co-curricular scholarships. Uh, so again, we offer athletic scholarships at the discretion of our coaches. Students can audition for Creative and Performing Arts scholarships that would be offered by our Creative and Performing Arts faculty. And students can apply for that service scholarship that would be reviewed by Jessica Vincent um, and her service staff. Generally with the service scholarship, you apply, uh, you have an essay, you um, indicate all the different service projects you've been involved in, and then that finishes up with an interview. In addition to co-curricular scholarships, students are able to qualify uh, through several other scholarships by filing the FAFSA for us. West Virginia residents are uh, eligible to receive the Mason Crickard Scholarship. Northern West Virginia residents are eligible to receive the Sarah Blake Scholarship. Another one that we offer is the Culpepper History Award. Students whose parents um, attended Westland are able to receive the Legacy Scholarship, and we also offer some United Methodist Awards to our Methodist students. Again, just kind of a time frame here for you. We do recommend that students apply by January 1st. Uh, we're past that October 1st deadline now where you can start filing and submitting the FAFSA. Once we have your FAFSA, uh, generally once we hit uh, late November, early December, we're able to start uh, processing our first unofficial financial aid packages of the year. We do recommend that students apply for and audition for any scholarships they're interested in by March 1st. And then once we hit March 1st, we're actually able to start processing official financial aid packages. If you haven't been to campus yet, I definitely recommend trying to make it up to campus. Even if you have been in the past and haven't been yet this year, definitely feel free to try to get signed up uh, to visit us on campus again. The campus has always been one of my favorite parts about Westland for sure. It's definitely a beautiful campus, um, has a college feel to it, has a very friendly atmosphere. Uh, so. Campus for sure has always been one of my favorite parts about Westland. We are currently offering campus visits, uh, weekday visits Monday through Friday. We have a morning group and an afternoon group. Our morning tour goes out at 11 a.m. generally. Generally the afternoon tour is gonna be at 1 p.m. We have implemented several, uh, several safety procedures just to make sure that visits are gonna be safe for students and their families. We're only allowing one family at a time. So we'll allow one family in the morning, one family in the afternoon. We make sure we have proper social distancing if it's a nice day, we're able to sit out front on our admissions porch. Face coverings are required at all times. We also require a temperature checks, and we've also had enhanced cleaning both in our office as well as across campus. If you're not able to make it to campus for um, a personal uh, campus visit, or even if you are able to make it to campus for a personal visit, definitely still feel free to sign up for one of our virtual open houses. For our virtual open houses, we'll have a welcome from our president, our head of admissions, They'll work you through our admissions uh, PowerPoint presentation again, but we'll also have some current students available and we'll have some faculty available uh, to have some different uh, sessions with them where you can ask some questions as well. Uh, but you can see our uh, next virtual open house day is coming up uh, this Saturday on Halloween, October 31st. The next virtual open house day after that will be November 14th. And then our final virtual open house of the semester will be December 5th. But if you're looking to sign up for either a personal weekday visit or one of those virtual open house dates, you can do so again on our college website at wvwc.edu. Definitely feel free guys to follow us on social media. We're very active on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we always like to share um, important information about Westside, anything that's going on on campus. Um, we like to share information about any kind of campus visits we have, uh, those virtual open house dates, different things like that. Uh, we'd like to share information about our alums. We also like to share information about our current students. So definitely feel free to follow us on social media uh, so you guys can stay engaged with Westland. And then lastly, if you guys ever have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to us. We never want any questions to go unanswered or unasked. Uh, so definitely make sure uh, 
find a way, uh, whether you are able to find what you're looking for yourself on our college website. If you can't find what you're looking for there, uh, definitely feel free to call our admissions office, email our admissions office. We'll be happy to talk with you. You can look up your individual admissions counselor on our college website. Uh, if by some chance you can't find it there, though, again, definitely feel free to call our admissions office. We'll get you in contact with who your uh, specific admissions counselor is. Uh, we're always happy to talk with you, answer any questions you guys have, help work you through the application process, help you send in your transcripts, help you with the FAFSA, help you apply or audition for a scholarship, whatever it may be. Uh, we're always happy to help you guys in any way we can. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and we'll get Amanda back on here. Amanda, do we have any questions? Let's see. We do. Um, we have a question that says, what all do you offer in music as far as education goes? So that's a good question for you, Scott. Sure. Um, as far as majoring, you can actually major in music. You can major in music education if you're looking to actually uh, teach music. Uh, we offer theater, musical theater, so all sorts of different programs that not only you can major in, but you can also be a member of, uh, whether it's uh, participating in the band, the choir, uh, musical theater, whatever it may be. Uh, but all that information is also available on our college website if you're looking for anything in more detail. Uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me if you have any more specific questions. I'll be happy to get you contact information for some of our music faculty as well. All right. Does anyone else have any other questions they would like to ask us? All right, nothing so far. Also, I don't remember, Scott, correct me if I was wrong. Did I go through what all we offer with the Student Success Center? I feel like I forgot to mention that. You didn't mention my thought, nothing uh, too specific now. Okay, so with the Student Success Center, since I forgot to mention that, I'll talk about that real quick. Um, basically what that program is, is they help you with resume building. They help you with um, alumni networking. So let's say there's an alum who's currently working in a field that you might be interested in. Um, they do kind of put you in touch with them. And then they help with internship placement, as well as um, helping you with your interview skills. So that's just kind of a brief summary of what that program is. Scott, do you have anything else you'd like to add on what all they do? No, I think you pretty well hit it. Um... I just like to say, I appreciate uh, everybody joining us tonight. I'm glad we had a chance to talk with you. Uh, we'd definitely uh, be happy to talk further if you guys have any additional questions. Again, if you haven't made up to campus for a visit, definitely try uh, to make it up to campus uh, to visit us. You'll have a chance to meet with your admissions counselor, um, ask any questions you have, obviously. Uh, we'll have a chance to get you out on a campus tour. If you happen to meet, uh, want to meet with a coach or anything like that, we can set that up for you as well. Absolutely. So feel free to reach out to either Scott or I, um, and we'll be happy to help you with anything that you need. If that means setting up a visit or just asking questions, just feel free to hit us up. So um, I think with that, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So I'll let Phil take over. All right. Big thanks to Amanda and Scott from West Virginia Wesleyan for joining us this evening. Um, like they, uh, just like to reiterate what they said, if you do happen to have any questions about West Virginia Wesleyan, feel free to reach out to them. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening as well. Um, whenever you do close this window, there is going to be a link for a, a, a short four question survey. Um, if you don't mind filling the, completing that for us, we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Um, this was one of the many sessions that were being hosted, so be sure to sign up for any additional sessions at wvacrao.org. Um, and again, in about a week or so, this session is recording will be posted uh, on that website, wvacrao.org. And you can rewatch this if you need to. Again, I'd like to thank you all for joining us and have a good night.